All right, so <clears throat> several years ago, um, I got this book, Hello Cupcake, from my cousin. And it was one of those things that I got, and I was like, oh, that's nice, and I put it up on a shelf. And then my oldest son went to preschool, and, and I wasn't like you know, feeling bad about my cousin. I just thought I would never use that. Then my oldest son went to preschool, and we had a Thanksgiving party, and I said, I need some cupcakes. So I started looking through here, and sure enough, there was a turkey cupcake. And I made it, and I was hooked. So um, I went from learning how to do all of the Wilton projects and buying this really, really expensive tool case and all the tools <laughs> and the colors and all of the painstaking work to understanding through this book, the Hello Cupcake book, that all I needed was a Ziploc bag and some tape. <laughs> It is a beautiful thing. <laughs> so today I have um, several different projects I've made. All of them come out of this book. Um, I've made aliens for my son's birthday. I've made pirate faces. Um, today we have spaghetti and meatballs. We have, um, this is the spaghetti and meatballs, complete with white chocolate Parmesan cheese. Um, we have um, bowling pins and a bowling ball, and there's a whole pool table set if you would like to try that. This is um, one of my favorites. This is a box of chocolates. It's all miniature chocolate cupcakes with um, marshmallows dipped in chocolate on top of it. And wouldn't that make a great teacher's gift? You know, you are the sweetest teacher. I'm sure all the teachers are going, no, no more sugar, please. No more sugar. So here's, here's what I'm going to show you how to do. Now this is where it's going to be a little tough because I need both hands. But first thing I'm going to show you is um, some tools. If you have a cookie scoop, now I know my mother's generation would be like, what the heck is a cookie scoop? We used a tablespoon. But we have these things now, so we might as well use them. And instead of using them for cookies, you can use it to scoop out cupcake batter so that your pan's a little bit neater when you bake it, if you're like the perfectionist like me. Um, you also need an offset spatula. See how it's kind of angled? And the tip to this is to always keep the back of it clean. If you keep the back of it clean, when you go to spread your icing, when you spread your icing, you rotate the cupcake counterclockwise and you move your spatula clockwise. You're going to need that later as you decorate your own cupcake. So let me show you that again. You hold your cupcake, you move the cupcake counterclockwise as you move your knife or spatula clockwise. That will make it nice and smooth and neat on there. Of course, this is a little bit different because we're about to dip it. So what I want to show you is how to make these bowling pins. What I did was I started with a regular cupcake and I iced it. Then I took a miniature cupcake and I stuck it on top. And sometimes you have to stick that in the freezer to make that icing nice and gluey, right? Nice and sticky and tough. Then I took some more icing and I stuck a donut hole on top of that. Now, how cool is that? A cupcake needs a donut hole, <laughs> right? You can snack while you create. It's beautiful. So you put that donut hole on top of, of this, and guess what you do again? You freeze it. And then after it's set, you can spoon some more, um, here it comes, you can spoon some more um, icing to smooth it. Now this is one of the reasons why I really love this book, is because there's this whole technique to smoothing this. You kind of can't tell so much from where you're sitting, but this was really, really smooth when it came out. Now watch this. Okay. So you, you nuke this icing, that store-bought icing, um, it's specific to store-bought icing, but you nuke the icing for 10 second intervals until it's real drippy. I don't know if you saw how drippy it is. You take this, you submerge it upside down, and you pull it up. And there is your perfect sheen. Now how hard was that? <laughs> right? That was easy. And you just kind of drip it off, you set it out, and you're done. That was it. You grab another one from the freezer. So um, these were decorated with just fruit leather that we cut and put on to make it look like a bowling pin. Um, I, dec I used green food coloring to make aliens and stuck in M&M buggy eyes. And um, it makes quite an impact when you walk in with something like that. They're like, ooh, how'd you make that? So just remember that cupcakes do like donut holes. It's a good thing. <laughs> to make the little chocolates, what we did was we cut marshmallows in half two different ways with the circle side up to make circles and with the um, circle side on the side to make it kind of lumpy. And then just did other white decorating icing on it. Doesn't that look like a candy out of a Whitman's box? And so the whole box is just like that. They're just miniature size. And then um, the spaghetti and meatballs I showed you, that was just taking a whole bunch of cupcakes that are just baked, 
and um, smoothing over the icing on them, sticking them real close together, and then this was the really fun part. You got to stick icing in a Ziploc bag, snip off the corner, and just squeeze all over it until it just really looked really messy. And then you step back and you go, that looks like spaghetti. To bake the meatballs, we just took Rochelle chocolates dipped in strawberry jelly. I mean, all the ideas are right here in the book, step-by-step -step instructions, and it's just a lot of fun. So what do you all think? Is this fun? Yeah.